Okay, so Georgia Jim sent me this two bar lock um, and he was having, well, I was having a hard time uh, getting it open. Um, it seems to be really, really hard to turn this lock. I don't know, this is the only two bar I've messed with, so I don't know if that's uh, normal for it to be really hard. In any case, it has um, eight of these spring pins that have false gates in them and you gotta push them all to the right depths. There are four on the left side that control a left side bar and uh, four on the right to control the right side bar, so two side bars in there. There's also these two little um, springed, uh, spring loaded uh, pins on the sides at the entry here, and basically, if you're pushing either of those in, then you can't rotate the core. So, um, you just gotta make sure maybe if you have your tension wrench pushing on those and you can't figure out why it can't turn, you gotta make sure you're not pushing on those. Um, let me think. Yeah, so uh, anyways, let's uh, go ahead and pick. Um, this tension wrench, this tension wrench. I guess it fits. So, <coughs> whoa, excuse me. Um, all right, so what you're looking for, push that one's springy. Uh, that was, I'll call them one, two, three, four down the left side and five, six, seven, eight down the right side. So five was springy, one is springy. 2 is, is binding, and it clicks. Now, it clicked in, but I feel that it's a false gate. How is it a false gate? Well, when I push on it, there's no motion at all, okay? Um, if I push it down further, and it can be hard to push these pins. I don't know if it's normal for the two bars to really go into the false gates like that, but um, they can be hard to push. Uh, all right, so I push this one down a second time, and now you can see it's springy now, okay? so. That tells me that it's in the true gate because the true gates are bigger and uh, you'll feel it spring. Sometimes you'll feel a little bit of springiness in a false gate, but not as much as if you're in a, in a right in a true gate. Um, on this right side now, pin number six, also binding. And he went down one time and I feel that he feels like he is springy, but maybe not, I'm not very far into it yet, so I'm gonna go down another level. Oh, that feels better. So the first one was springy, but it, it felt kind of small springy. So that's what I was talking about, where a false gate might have a little bit of spring to it. Let me see if I can get any more pins. No, I can't get more pins with that uh, particular tension wrench in there. So let's go ahead and put some tension on the top side. Take that guy. Oh, you know what? I should check one and two after I got the well, whatever. Um, so let's go down here. All right, that one's binding. Or well, it's got a little bit of spring to it. That was three. And four has a little spring to it. Okay. Um, I'm not going to touch those for now. Those might be zero set ones because they got springiness at the top. All right, this uh, pin number seven is binding. Okay, and it feels pretty good springy there. Pin number eight, binding. Really hard. Let's see, did I lose something? All right, so now pin number seven got all springy on me. Pin number eight doesn't feel good. He feels really solid, just stuck there. Um, let me go check up here if I lost anything. No. This guy, I feel like I lost seven. Eight, maybe he's overset. We'll just keep playing. Maybe this tension wrench will do, do me better. Okay. Maybe I should tension the other way, been easier. Let's see, pin number one still springy, pin two, binding. It's binding solid after one click. Springy after two clicks, let's see if I lost, okay, I did lose number six. He's got that springy, but I remember that first one felt like a false gate. There's the second one, feels good. Pin two is still set. Check if pin one, still springy. Let's go, okay, I can't get to the bottom ones there. I didn't like this tension wrench as much. Let's do this one here. That. Uh, check down here again. He's super springy. Left sides. Yeah, I'm gonna leave those alone. That one is springy there. Okay, springy there. Okay, now that one is uh, setting finally. Uh, that was seven. Go back to six, two, it's kind of, kind of the poking game, right? Sorry if my head's getting in the way there. I'm trying to 
get a view on an angle. Let me turn this a little. I think. Hard to tell. Okay. I'm questioning whether number eight is actually far enough or needs to go another one. I'm going to leave it for just now and check. So this two bar, it's a lot of just going back and forth like this, I feel. Maybe it's just me. Okay, pin one. It wasn't. It was springy before. Now it, I got a light binding from it. It's quite light. It won't stay down. I feel a little bit. Okay, so I, pin six was binding again. Pin two is good. Pin six popped up a little. Go back to one. It's by, I can feel it hitting the gates, but it's not. It, it's kind of in there, I guess. Okay, so these top pins all feel good. Let's go back to the bottom pins again. Um, that feels good. That guy's down now in p position, I think. So those two feel good. That feels good. Everything feels good. This thing is extremely hard to turn. So it's really hard to know if we are picked. Okay, did I overset this? All right, overset pin number eight for sure. Something just popped up. That was pin number seven popped up. So pin number eight is overset. And the problem with oversetting a pin is that, um, all right, I got it back out by letting off some tension. The problem with oversetting a pin is there's, there's also false gates past the um, the true gate. So if you overset a pin, there's a likelihood that it's going to be very difficult to get out of because of that false gate after the true gate. It's not on all of them. The ones that set deeper, they tend to be already set. So the, as far as I can tell, the most gates that any one pin will have is three. For example, this, uh, but a lot of times the first false gate is going to be at like zero lift so you're not even going to feel it um, usually because that's you're going to be sitting in it when you start uh, and you're going to have to be able to push your way out of it okay I got some core rotation there and okay so I the only time I picked it before I ran to the same thing this bottom right pin is not set and uh, so it's sitting in a false gate and I can't push it because so um, sorry, Jim, but this worked for me before. So hammer with it on the pin because I don't know why it's not moving. Uh, I don't know if I can do it this time. Oh, I let off some tension and got it in there, but now I probably lost something else in the process. Okay, he's down in there. He's down. He's down, down. I'm going to try some really heavy tension, try not to lose that bottom right pin. Check these top right ones, see if they dropped out. This top left one did. This top left one is not set anymore. Is he down far enough? He's gotta go down. There, okay, so we're open. Whew, I'm sweating. It's like, I have to push really hard to turn this. Actually, it's turning easier than it turned before. So, that's good. Um, so, Jim did let me do a little destructive work to this to allow it to be opened. Um, so I'm going to try to see if we can open this. It's not easy. Um, but we can see, maybe you can see there, the cam can turn. So it's picked. And we'll go ahead and lock her up. There we go. And there's a little hole here that will poke while we try to pry the top off. So let's uh, aim down a little bit. But before we do that, um, I bought some of these pack lock padlocks. They're uh, Kick 1As, and you can buy this in two formats. One with a Schlage style 
back to it and the other one with a like um, hatch style back to it so I I bought these because I have a bunch of these uh, Schlage um, kick cylinders and I was thinking maybe I'll use these to make challenge locks and I also have a bunch of these Falcon kick cylinders but unfortunately these things are designed for I think six pin uh, cores and so the five pin core has the problem of this it's too short so if it's out like this so let's have it out like this I can can oh, can't get the actuator I have to push it push it in right and then turn it so maybe that's an extra safety feature somebody picks your lock and they're like oh it doesn't work right I don't know whatever um, but the cool thing is like I could have the key sideways and then actuate it from here I think no maybe not because there has that little pin thing on it but it does work um, but it's annoying and then uh, so that's the schlage it'll fit in there then if you take my falcon kick the uh, the Bible's too fat to fit in the retainer so I don't know I I have other kicks that this might work with but I'm not going to give them away for challenge locks I think maybe like uh, my uh, Primus which is six pins uh, will work better so anyways um, little secret giveaway um, I think I'll let it uh, if you just put if you're a subscriber and you like and you comment uh, any comment down below and you just include the word free somewhere in your comment um, then I'll let you pick whichever color you want um, I'll include the Schlage and the Falcon even though you can't really fit them in there but you can have them anyways um, but that's it uh, I'll randomly pick somebody from whoever has free in their comment and I'll give them one so and I'm not gonna advertise it so it's just a little hidden thing for people who religiously watch my bore, boring stuff. Um, all right, hopefully we have enough time in the video because again, there's the time limitation on the camera to get into this two bar. Oh, it's been sitting over there, so I didn't, I didn't swap it out with something. <laughs> um, all right, so it's a little tricky. You gotta push this little button. Well, it's, there's a little ring in there I push down on. And at the same time, I need to lift up on the um, on the cap so let's go ahead and try that now uh, how did I do this before was it in a vise? maybe it was in a vise this is not the ideal vise to do this in I probably had it in my other vise let's see I have to do it without being able to see it though there is a little gap over here. Okay, so I got that lifted up. So, I've lifted the cap away from the edge like that. And now I just gotta go around and lift the cap away all the way around. Let's try the other side like this. And then it comes off. Okay, so there we got the cap get that junk out the way um, so that came off and has this little metal face plate so if you try to just tension off that it it might work because there's these two little nubs here that that face plate sits in so yeah I think you could tension just off this little front black plate um, so there's that front black plate then there is this piece be careful when you take this out it's got two spring-loaded pins on the sides to make sure that I guess you have a hole in the sides of your keys. There's no, I don't have a key for this, so I don't know what the key looks like. Uh, I guess I could look online, but I was too lazy. Um, so there's two little side pins. They're on little springs like that. We could, uh, we don't have to take them out, but I'll take them out. And so there's that piece. And now we can, it, you can push up on this to take this whole inner piece out. Careful when you pull this out, there are two side bars on the side, so I'm gonna hold this in. That's it for this. It's got this little uh, this little clip here, um, circle clip, and that's what I was pushing on with that pokey tool through this cap. I was pushing on that because that 
bites into a lip here and that's what keeps it, the cap from coming off. All right, so we've got two of these sidebars on the side. There's one trying to come out. Um, it looks, it's almost like a, it's almost like a cylinder, but it's got some shape to it. Um, so that's the left side sidebar. Then you got a right side sidebar. And these sidebars are sitting in these little half moon shaped pieces like this, okay? So this half moon shaped piece has a sidebar sitting in it, right? So the sidebar is gonna push in on this half moon piece. And this half moon piece has this flat side that has to go into the slots of the pins. So let's take the other side's half moon out. And each of these pins now, I'll show you a pin. So this is pin number one that we saw had to go click down past a false gate, right? You can see that there's this false gate here Okay, so we got we got this um, two false gates on the bottom, you see that? And then the true gate up top, and you're pushing down on the pin. So you're gonna go past those two false gates before you get to this true gate. However, if you have the pin back in again, you might see there that there's that false gate. We're already in the first one. So you're sitting in it, so you're only gonna feel one false gate, and then you're gonna get to that true gate right there. See that? So we'll take these pins out. That first one, like I was showing you, has the, the the true gate at the top, meaning it's the last one that you'll hit. Pin two looks exactly the same. Remember pin three and four were like these zero, zero lift pins or zero push. Oh, okay, wait, before I do, well, all right, pin three, you see, it has the true gate at the bottom. Oh man, I didn't pay attention to what I was focused on. Anymore. True gate at the bottom. So pin three, um, you don't is zero lift. Uh, pin seven just ejected itself. It's got a true gate in the middle, so it was the first click I encountered. Uh, that's seven. This thing doesn't have seven. All right, I'll do it up here like this. Seven. Uh, pin six. True gate at the top, kind of like uh, one and two were. And pin number four, same. So one, two, four, and five are all the same. They all have, um, oh my gosh, the focus is like going crazy. Um, they all had the true gate at the top, so the, um, after two false gates. Pin four, I know I'm doing this in a weird order. Pin four. Oh, sorry, pin eight just ejected itself. So pin eight looks the same as, almost the same as pin seven, except its second false gate is higher for whatever reason. So you'd have to push that really far down to catch that, really far past its true gate to catch the false gate, whereas this one you have to go a little bit past to catch a false gate. And then the last one is pin four, which for whatever reason only has one false gate before the true gate, nothing at top. So you're not sitting in a false gate with that one. I, I don't know. I guess that one, it's kind of like acts like your standard pin in a core that stops you from dropping into a false set right off the get-go. So that acts like that, I guess, that you have that standard part of that one. And then it's got, I haven't taken these springs out before. I, oh, okay. There are three, I got three of them out. That'll be good. Oh, there's, oh, whatever. It looks like they're all the same. So you got just a bunch of springs. That's five of them. There's another one, six. There's seven, just one flying onto the pinning tray. And there's eight. And, okay. All right, so anyways, there's your plug right there. All right? There's your cylinder. It's got a groove down this side for one of the sidebars and one down the other for the other sidebar, so two sidebars. And here are your pins. Oh, one of the guys went sliding down. I don't know which one it was, but they're the same. So one, two, uh, five, and six are all, all the same kind of pin. So those are our pins, our little sidebars and half moons and 
all that goodness. Anyways, that is the Compex, I think it is the company Compex uh, 2 bar. Okay, thanks.